Hi everyone, good evening. How are you doing? I, oh, my, my, where's my, where's my webcam gone? Why has my webcam not worked? Press, press, press. No? Oh, my webcam is not working tonight. I wonder why that is. Anyway, let's, um, oh, why is my webcam not working? Video capture, show, show. Is there anything in the way? I don't think so. Little title gone. Oh, perhaps I've broken it. Oh well. No me tonight then. I'll see why I why that is not working later. Oh, it's because it's not actually on. Oh. Have I muted my camera? All right, I've nuked my camera, so it's it's now it's without me tonight. I'm afraid because it looks like my camera has died. Oh, it's not died. It's just. Oh, it's it's working now. Let's try again. Let's try again. It's gone to. I think it's gone to sleep. No, it's. It's not firing up. Oh well. We'll forget it for now and I'll fix it next week. Um, how are we doing guys? Uh, hey Dangerous Brian, Do oh, Dougal, McTavish, Two-Tone Murphy, hello, hello. Uh, we've also got Flockstrot. Thank you for coming Flockstrot. How are you doing? And um, sorry about that guys. Oh and uh, Colonel Fork has resubscribed for, for a three month streak. Thank you so much. Technology always works perfectly. Do you know what? It worked absolutely fine 10 minutes ago and now it's no, now it's not. So it works. Windows is working, but um, my video capture device. No, not showing anything. That's weird. Weird, weird and weird. Never mind. We'll, we'll, we'll get cracking. So um, we're going to do leg 17 uh, very quickly today, just so that we're in place for our... Uh, Arabian adventure on Saturday where we will fly the last record-breaking flight that uh, Amelia flew which is the leg um, from the Red Sea to Karachi it was the, the the first time that anyone had flown that route uh, in a single leg so we'll be doing that and it's going to be about 10 to 10 and a half 11 hours on Saturday so I thought we'd just do the hop down and prep tonight I'm Gibbo, Gibbo, hello. I'm doing well, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so the route today is very, very short and sweet. Um, it's take off from Asab and fly down straight in to um, Asab. Um, so uh, there's uh, Amelia getting ready to get in the cockpit when she was leaving Masawa. And that's her actually getting in to the cockpit <laughs> for for um, Masawa. So what we'll do is we'll get ready and uh, fired up and get up into the air as uh, quickly as we can so that we're all done before Murph's stream tonight. I'm, I'm sorry my camera's not working. I will have to work with that afterwards and find out why it's just not presenting itself. Because I don't know what I've done. I wonder if I, hang on, if I move that into there and then press that, will it work? No. Never mind, never mind. I wonder why it's not triggering because it's actually not the light's not coming on when I turn um, Streamlabs on. So perhaps it's because it's updated and I need to change it. Yes, it is. It's an RDF she had, um, but it's also yeah, uh, it's also the the the, the device she used for telef radio telephony. Dougal. So remember, they didn't use um, traditional uh, Morse code um, um, communications. They actually use voice telephony, which was uh, really, 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 really um, uh, in its infancy. Yeah, I, I just don't know where my cables all are at the moment. So, Aditya, hey, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. I'm, we're just about to start getting underway here in um, in Masawa, and we're going to head down to Asab. It's around about 268 miles, um, so it won't take us very long, about an hour and a half. Um, to get up into the air so let's get everything all nicely set up and the props are on and my brakes are on and my doors are shut and we'll clear the prop and then we'll give it a quick fire okay that's good let's uh, just get that around around about the thousand mark get the alternators on it's like some nav light can come on avionics can come on we are going to fly at the um, 8,000 feet again today so um, We'll set this up to 8,000 feet. Um, it's pretty barren. There shouldn't be too many hills, Brian, because we're going to be flying along the coast. But there are some um, around about halfway, but they're, they're way below us. So uh, 
they're going to be way 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 below us so it should be good for that and then we will get that transponder on I'm just going to quickly check my flaps are working all good there and I'm going to work the other way okay. control surfaces it's a little bit harder to do I'm going to check it outside then it's easier with my VR Okay, and then what we'll do is do a quick quick release of the parking brake and then we'll just roll it forward a little bit okay my brakes are working so that's good and then we will trundle off to the runway we're actually going to go to our right and this is to the Let's trundle. How are you all doing? How was your Monday, everyone? I hope it was a good Monday. How many full legs are there, Tigger? Um, 20, ugh, I think there's 32 in total. Um, and the full flight plan and full maps are over on the Two Tone Murphy Discord. Um, and I have a stream. Um, um, stream channel there and if you go and look at the pinned messages um, you'll be able to see all of the legs all of and the full plan and everything so yeah we are approximately halfway around now yeah we're about just about a hundred miles over the hunt the halfway mark so um, sort of homeward bound. We've got some long legs to go yet though. Yeah, my, my, my first day back at work today after a few days off ill. Um, it was hard work. <laughs> it's always hard work, isn't it, when you go back for the first day. So, uh, Oh, I know he's around here. I don't know his MC forty five. go down here and do the backtrack down and turn around hey Viper Strike no it's a very quick one it's one of my ad hocs um, because we've got a long flight on Saturday so um, I thought rather than make it a 15 hour flight I'd turn it into a you know 10 hour to 12 hour flight so um, we're going to just quickly get this out of the way today and then we're all ready for a nice single leg flight on Saturday which coincides with what um, Amelia and Fred did so we're flying again it's another 110 degrees uh, Fahrenheit day it's around about 8 o'clock in the morning um, local time and um, it's going to be hot we're going to be 8,000 feet and uh, shoot it on down to um, Asap where they spent one day um, getting so literally get there early today and then get the aircraft ready and away they went on their record-breaking flight from the Red Sea so now it's just a quick one in It's a prenuptial flight for Tito Murphy. It is if Murph's flying in the Mooney. <laughs> Howdy, Race Division. Lovely to see you. Saw you on um, on with um, Captain Arash this morning. Hope you're doing well. 
Uh, my camera's not working for some unknown reason. I think there was a down update to OBS, so I might need a, to reboot it and update it. Right, let's get turned around then and get ready to go in the air. Hopefully my computer will behave. I really haven't done much with it today other than work on it, so. Okay, let's uh, line us all up. Oh, and there's Goblin Zeus coming along as well. So um, we'll hold, hold here. So we'll get my landing light, tax lights come off. Strobe lights can come on. Put the parking brake on for a moment while Goblin Zeus gets down here. Get rid of that, we won't need that for a while. As there's only a few of us here today, we're just gonna get up and go. Oh, Murphy's here as well, and, uh, oh, and in the, and in the, and in the, in the Mooney as well, Ooh. No, I don't want to be famous, thanks. So, oh, hi. You do have some making up to do. I hope you're talking nicely to her. Right, so our route today is from Hotel Hotel Mike Sierra in Masawa to Hotel Hotel Sierra Bravo, which is a sub in Eritrea. We're on the North Europe server. Right, let's uh, park your brakes engage. <laughs> okay, so let's just make sure barometers are all set and that's all good. Okay, I've oiled my pedals so these might even be even worse than the other day. So, uh... okay, let's get a roll out. Uh, a little bit, a little bit. These frame rates are a little bit weird. You have been neglecting the Mooney. Oops, a little bit of a wobble. There we go. Okay, positive brake, gear up. No obstacles to overcome. So we'll go straight up and then we'll make a right departure. We'll just quickly go over the coastline and then we'll make sure everybody's up and we'll head on out. Here they come. Okay. Didn't have any flaps down because we don't need them. Okay, so manifold pressure. Can't bring that down a little bit. Leave the RPM at 2500 for climb out. I was trying to use my trim wheel, and my because my trim wheel doesn't uh, doesn't work in the Mooney. Okay, nicely trimmed up. Uh, still, yeah, still over sensitive, aren't you, on the on the control button? Okie dokie. Let's get turned out. Hey Katie, how are you doing?
let's uh, get ourselves underway. The elevator trim, yeah. Oh, turn on the electronic. Oh, elevator trim. Yeah, okay. Because I was like, how do I get it to work on the on the um, on my trim wheel? Because I've got it on my on my horn of the yoke. Ah, okay. Let's see. I'll do it when I I calm down. Yeah. pressure back a little bit, get the RPM down just a little bit as we're still climbing out. And we're on our way. Amelia wrote, uh, on Tuesday the 14th of June, we moved from the Red Sea from Asawa to Assab to prepare for our long flight along the Arabian coast to India. Assab was nearer our objective than Masawa, and it offered better takeoff facilities as well as a greater supply of 87 octane gasoline. Um, Eritrea stretches along the coast of the Red Sea for 670 miles. Our course took us half that length. Soon we left behind the mountains that bordered the coastline and bade farewell to everything that was green. Approaching the Sab, the coast became terribly barren beyond description. So it's going to be interesting to see how accurate that is, because when we came over the mountains on Saturday, she'd said that it was the first sort of green that they'd seen for a while, and it pretty much was. So um, hopefully we'll have... Uh, it will keep up with her diaries. <laughs> hey Aussie Coffee Bean, thank you very much. I hope you're doing well. Now we are over halfway up through the round the world trip. Just another 14,300 miles to go. Can't remember actually how much, how, many, how, many, how, how, how much have we got to go at Wheels Up? Yeah, 14,330 miles to go from Wheels Up today. Uh, I imagine we'll see few towns along this coastline. It's uh, changed somewhat since um, Amelia's day. So one hour 43 it reckons, well once we're cruising it will speed up a little bit. 233 to go, 45 on the left, changing tanks now.
how good is it to be flying again? Spent all day working, looking forward to getting myself in my little airplane tonight. I'm looking forward to the uh, the uh, uh, the sixth leg of the um, Orient Express uh, flight this evening with Tuto Murphy over on Twitch. So uh, if you've never joined the Fireflies on a Monday, Wednesday, or Friday, then uh, come and join us. We're doing the last leg of. Uh, the uh, route of the um, Orient Express and we're flying from Bucharest until uh, Istanbul or Constantinople as it was and that takes us off at 8 p.m. UK time today did you give it a wash Murph and I've done that again haven't I my weather because I loaded in wrong so ignore this it should be WPP blazing sun and it should be about 40 degrees and MSL so that's a little bit better and then because that will change that change that Captain Arash hello welcome um, Tigger um, it doesn't, so in the sim the Mooney doesn't. Well, thank you for following Coffee Offer Bee. Um, thank you very much. Um, the Mooney in the sim only has 95 gallons uh, fuel, of which 86 is usable. Um, but for the 80th anniversary round the world flight, a Mooney ovation was used for that flight and it was specially modified to have 200 gallons of fuel. So what we're going to do is we're going to simulate having 200 gallons of fuel so it's in line with what the Mooney was capable of and it then gives us the, uh, the approximate speed um, capacity as well of the uh, cruise speed of the Electra um, and gives us a, an approximate range of 3,003 nautical miles. So that should give us 500 miles spare on the longest leg which is the hardest one um, from Leh in Papua New Guinea down to Howland Island. So we're going to simulate it um, as having enough by changing the fuel in flight. Because she didn't land uh, on her legs bar one, which was the last leg we did. No, you're very welcome. So uh, the Electra had 1151 gallon fuel capacity. So she had modified tanks all the way um, through um, the aircraft and if you can see here this is Amelia um, her feet are facing the cockpit of the aircraft and these are the some of the installed tanks inside um, so there were 12 in total um, extras in the wing and then most of them in here uh, Captain Arash no, um, um, I don't normally have a stream on a Monday um, this is an extra one to get us in place for Saturday um, which is a very long flight on Saturday afternoon where we fly from the uh, Asab all the way over to Karachi via the coast of Saudi, uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, Yemen and uh, Oman. So um, it's a long flight. It's going to take us about 11 hours approx. So, uh... <laughs> Murphy, editing cogs, with, uh, have you crashed or died or... <laughs> gone backwards. There's Dougal on my left. We've got Dangerous Brian and Drew Zeus and Murphy was around here somewhere but oh dear. So yeah just a little extra stream today just to get us in place for the long flight. It's not our longest. Our longest is going to be about 15 hours um, but this is the second longest. Thank you, Captain Arash. You're, you're very welcome. And um, obviously, Captain, uh, I keep talking about Captain Arash. I watch Captain Arash while I'm at work. Uh, Captain Arash is doing a, a similar crazy around the world trip um, in his uh, Cessna 172, um, flying real world, real navigation, no GPS. Um, and Monday, I think it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturdays over on Twitch. So if you do get some time during your working week, go and say hi to my friend Captain Arash and you'll probably see me there when I'm <coughs> listening while working.
so because we're not going to have much time when we get down on the ground so obviously that was the airport chart at Masawa so you're all used to your Jefferson plates now um, but these are the ones that Amelia used so this is the airport at Masawa you can see it's very very basic just has the long lats the altitude which was 40 feet um, and basically the rough positioning of where the runway was um, the chart for a Saab that's actually really tiny let me make that bigger that was a bit that's a bit useless isn't it So there you can see the longitude, the latitude, it's a military aerodrome back in uh, 1937. Uh, you can see the rough positioning of the airport um, and the airport location. So that's where we're going to be coming in. We're going to be coming straight in runway 12 today. Um, but whilst it was hangered, um, these are really come out really tiny. Uh, whilst the, from the hangar, the, uh, the, um, the coastline here, because it's uh, where the plates join, it's very volcanic, but there was an extinct volcano right outside uh, from the hangar. So this is looking out across the, from the hangar to the volcano. Um, the aircraft was refuelled at um, Masawa, obviously using um, the barrels and uh, funnels. Um, the engine was worked on. This is showing people actually doing the work uh, in their pith helmets because it was dead hot. Um, here's um, Amelia and Fred and some officials in the hangar. Sorry it's a bit dark but that's the original photo and a lot of people met them at, at Saab. Um, so this is a, a group photo of all the people um, around the uh, Electra after they arrived. Uh, so here's Amelia um, just here and, and um, with Fred, but everyone's got their pith helmets on. Oh, that water glitch down there, yeah. yeah hopefully, when they do the She absolutely was a brave soul, Captain Arash. Um, even more so because the ooh, don't try. Um, the cartography or the mapping of Africa beyond um, Fort Lamy was dreadful. So um, Fred said that the navigation of across Africa was the hardest he'd ever done. Maybe it's not so much of a water glitch as meant to be a drying lake, but yeah, it's a bit weird, isn't it? So 46 on the right, 45 on the left, change tanks in one gallon. Now let's just uh, pull my RPMs down a little bit. Increase the manifold pressure. Manage my... Because I'm yakking away and what, not watching what I'm doing. Okay, and we're on our way then. So one hour, twelve minutes. So now, now we're into cruise. It's uh, going to speed up a little bit. But yeah, she was incredibly brave um, to do all the things she did. Um, and given that she'd never been to any of these places before, so you know, it's not, it's not, <laughs> it's not like people taking this on. And you know, there wasn't a lot to research. The maps didn't exist. But the logistical endeavours that they went through to get all of the fuel in all of the, and oil in all of the locations that she needed to be in uh, was mammoth. And uh, I'm still trying to find how, how much the entire flight cost, but I can't find it anywhere. So I know how much the aircraft cost, I know how much some of the fuel cost in certain places, but I don't have all the receipts for everything. So. Uh, It'd be interesting to find out how much um, it all cost. The landing fees at um, Masawa were three pounds, oh sorry, at Khartoum were uh, three pounds 22 shillings, which turns out to be around about 220 pounds in today's money. 
So uh, if you ever complain about your $30 landing fees, have a thought for Amelia who was paying <laughs> quite a lot more than that when she was landing in these remote locations. And that's the Red Sea that we're flying along here. Obviously not red, but a lovely blue. Okay, 45 and 45, changing tanks. Hey, that's Swamp Donkey. I'm flying the Mooney M20R Ovation. Um, which is... Um, similar to the aircraft that was used on the 80th anniversary flight um, around the world. Oh, it's a beautiful aircraft. It's, uh, it's, got, it's got that moony roar. It is the one on the marketplace, yes. It's the, it's the one by Caronado. It contains a cyanobacteria called Deconodesia. <laughs> Aren't we all the, <laughs> that swamp donkey? I've had to stop and put my purse away this month because crikey, I've spent so much money. <laughs> turns and uh, normally blue green water into a reddish moon. Interesting. But it's payday Friday. <laughs> payday Friday. Oh and if anyone's got the VGP Power Solo Aerolite, um, the you know the, the um, Asbo Ultralight, there's an update today and it introduces floats floats with retractable wheels so there's an ultralight with floats I can't wait to download that later after the streams and have a go at that tomorrow <laughs> it's a it's a really super light ultralight aircraft yeah the aircraft carries fun I actually won that on a giveaway by on Tuto Murphy's um, chat uh, discord so uh, I was very lucky I don't normally win anything but that was nice but I must confess I am not a very good aircraft carrier lander so uh, but it is fun ah oh, Candoris yeah Candris, I, 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 Captain Arash will correct me if I'm wrong, but I think, I seem to think that Candris is the person that inspired Captain Arash to do his round the world flight in the C-172. But I could be wrong. One, it is Brian, isn't it? I mean, let's be fair. When it came out and, and the Mooney was first um, available, every every update seemed to kill it, and it was it was killed for a while. But since then, it's been pretty good. Oh, I know that Swamp Donkey. I mean, we're we're flying in um, default liveries right now, and um, but I've got a special livery that's based on the uh, Electra and it's um, all aluminium and it's got red highlights on the leading edges of the wing and the stabilizers but if I load in it will it'll just make it really laggy for everyone so for the last two legs I've had to go without it yeah so this is the, that's the plane that Amelia flew in this one's the aircraft at um, the Seattle Museum of Flight and was used in the film Amelia. 
so and I'm hoping one day they'll bring an Electra into the game you can port the one from FSX but it the propellers don't work and it's not it's not quite the same but if they ever bought the Electra in I'm all over that and I would do it again um, to do it the hard way Oof. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. That's not very good. I see my brain wasn't going wonky. It was, it was Candoris and Lewis around the world. We're on North, North Europe, Papa Joe. The stuttering is liveries, but the brain rate's not so sure. I mean, I've got a, I've got a 68, 100 XT. I know, Dougal. It, I mean, we've got. I've got some. We've got. I've got a 2080 going spare here, just in case anything goes wrong. I don't want to get rid of it, just in case. I have Captain Arash, but I haven't yet quite worked out all the buttons I want to have on my profile. And I want them such that they're the same on all of them so that my muscle memory is not too bad. Um, because when I fly in VR, I want to be able to press the button and know I'm pressing the right one because I can't see it. So um, I haven't quite decided on the order of them yet, but yes, I will buy into the tanks at some point. I just don't know which ones I'm going to do. So. Uh, one thing to try that swamp monkey donkey is to uninstall the one of the latest windows patches i think it ends in 330 um, uninstall it restart reinstall it and some people have said that the frame rates have come back a bit it doesn't fix the stuttering issue um, but it can improve the frame rates apparently some people have had success I've done it and I'm not seeing any problems. No problem, you're very welcome. And, uh, you know, if you ever need any help or want some help. Oh, thank you for the follow, that swamp monkey. Monkey, donkey, it's that swamp donkey. I've got, I've got monkeys on the head. My, my, my other half's nickname is, is monkey. Um, but yeah, if you want to, um, I don't have, I don't use my own Discord other than for promoting the streams going live. But you can find us over on Two Tone Murphy's Discord, um, along with the other Fireflies, and uh, you know we've got lots of channels on there. We've got add-on channels, support channels, and all sorts of things. So if you want to come over and ask questions and get some help, we've got some really great guys and girls over there that can help out. Cybernetic 2021, hello, good evening, good afternoon, good morning. How you doing? I think the stutters will be people in liveries, Dougal. We, we absolutely proved it on my stream on Saturday when um, Draco loaded in in the, in the Electra livery. Hey, Valhalla controls. Yeah, having a pretty good day, actually. I'm feeling a lot better. I haven't, wasn't that very well last week, and I'm feeling much better today. Uh, no pain, because that's good. And um, what, can be what can be worse, eh? Flight simming immediately after work. How are you doing? I hope you're, I hope you're doing well. Um, you've caught us here as we do a quick trip down to Asab. 
uh, flying from uh, Masawa in Eritrea to get ready for our flight on Saturday, which is um, should in the air times around about ten and a half hours. So by the time we've got uh, um, much better, then and once we got ready, probably ten and a half hours, eleven hours in the air. Um, so, and it will be the last record-breaking flight that Emilia Earhart ever undertook because it was the, the, the first time anyone had flown from the Red Sea directly to uh, Karachi before. You're very welcome and I hope to see you soon, that swamp donkey. Oh, I, I want to do... Oh, I want to do it in the Electra so bad. <laughs> and you've done it all oh, fantastic. Was that in the um, FSX version or the P3D? Oh, uh, FSX version. Yeah, you could. We can. You can import it. Yeah. Well, I've reached out to all those people that have made it in the past and asked them if they are considering it, and all of them have said never say never. I'm hoping that they will because it's quite an iconic plane. Not that it was an immensely popular aircraft, but it was the first all-metal aircraft. It was the one that was really kicked off commercial aviation in the United States following the changes to the law. Um, you know, and I just, you know, I've never seen one in real life either, so my goal is to get to the, to the Museum of Flight in Seattle and see the one they have there. Um, I've watched it fly on videos, watched it fly on the, the film Amelia. I've seen people go in it. Um, but I really want to have a look in there because, you know, look at that cockpit. I mean, just look at it. Isn't it something? I mean, this one's a little bit updated. This is updated to fly in modern times. Hey, oh, that's brilliant. So I'm trying to make sure, that I'm, I'm really hoping to get more guys and girls, definitely more female pilots into flight simming. I don't know, Dougal. I'm, I must have a look. But the Electra is an amazing aircraft. So I'm hoping that we'll um, get one in the stream at some point. So, um, yeah, I wasn't very well, but I don't let that put me off to Katie. I did, I did some lessons for Katie doing circuit doing her circuits and then I caught her streaming later on in the day in, in, the, in the Spitfire <laughs> doing all sorts of aerobatics that was great to see <laughs> welcome oh, welcome back oh my word Arctic turn hey 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 you have caught me twice in a week um, Arctic Turns another great streamer. Uh, he and I duked it out on CDL's Watch the Flock uh, competition a few weeks ago now, um, which was great fun. I really enjoyed that. But um, Arctic Turn does uh, some great, uh, some great streams, um, primarily to support the great work that he and his, his uh, charitable organisation does in Venezuela. Um, so if you don't know um, Arctic Turn, he. he, he the stuff that they do to help look after and feed, clothe and educate children is absolutely fantastic. So, you know, pop over and pay them a visit and uh, help, you know, if you can, pop a little support for the charity work that he does because it's absolutely amazing. Merlin, hey, how are you doing? Yeah. Yeah, the, 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 the Spitfire is a beautiful aircraft to fly. <laughs> getting it up in the air and getting it down, not so much. And when you think about it, that they only had like two weeks training before they sent them up to combat. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. So we're um, 161 miles out from Asab. Um, we're just doing the quick hop. Arctic turn just to get us ready for the um, the long flight on Saturday uh, all the way from uh, the Red Sea coast all the way over to Karachi 
Um, and because uh, Saudi Arabia wouldn't let them fly directly, they had to follow the coastline. So it took them a little bit further to go. So um, we're going to be doing that on Saturday. And we're now officially over halfway um, on our trip. I'm accompanied by the Fireflies. We've got Dougal McTavish, Papa Joe B, Dangerous Brian, and Druid Zeus, who's got Ben Zeus in chat. But we did have a Murph at some point. <laughs> very, very true, very true, Valhalla. He's playing with buttons, all right. And if you do have a Mooney M20R Ovation in Microsoft Flight Simulator, and you would like an Electra-inspired livery to um, put on her when the livery stutter issue is gone, um, we have had a special livery designed for this flight by Gibbo Ireland. Um, that you can go and download on twotonemurphy.com forward slash downloads. Um, it's free and uh, there's a picture of what it looks like and it, it's absolutely stunning and I'm, I'm so sad that I can't fly it at the moment but it, uh, it would um, affect people's multiplayer performance so I don't want to do that. But it's beautiful and I love it. No, you're welcome. Arctic Turn, I think you're doing a fantastic thing, so, which is why I like to support you and shout out wherever I can. Oh, so, it is pretty desolate, but the mountains aren't quite gone yet, but... Yeah, very true, Colonel Fork. Yeah, very true indeed. You know, if you have them all on, it solves it. But if, if you don't all have them, they're aware of it, Captain Arash. And it's, it's even such that if you're flying a C-172 with the steam gauges and someone else is flying but they've only got the standard edition, which has only got the C-172 with the G-1000, you will cause them to stutter because your aircraft is technically a livery they don't have. So it's even worse than just third party liveries. It actually is caused by different versions of the same simulator and different aircraft that's contained in each version. So they do need to fix it and they need to fix it yesterday. It was just easier to spot when it was a, a custom livery. And then it started happening. When everyone was in custom liveries, it was like, well, why is it still doing it? That's right, Flockstrot, yeah. The, 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 they, 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 they're all flashing. Yeah. Yeah, they flash away, so. And you'll probably notice I haven't got my camera on because for some unknown reason, when I started um, Streamlabs OBS, it updated and now my camera won't show, even though it's working. So um, you'll get to see my sunny little disposition face on Saturday instead now. Because I can't get the darn thing to work. I get all the overlays to work, but not my camera. It just won't light up. Perhaps I need to just double, double check it. Perhaps I will press buttons. Did that work? Webcamage, hey guys, how you doing? <laughs> no, you've got me back now, button presages. Let me do that then, throw that up there. Hey guys. Hello. Hey 
Hey Kazaki, I'm doing actually really good today, thank you. Um, feeling way, way better than I did um, from Wednesday onwards. I was really rough. Um, still pretty bad yesterday. Um, woke up this morning and all things were pretty good. So, ah, buttonage, yeah. So, I, yeah, that was a bit risky. <laughs> So I deactivated, in, in OBS I opened the video capture device, deactivated and reactivated and then that worked. So, it had to be something silly, right? How's the rudder? I don't know, Google, um, because I sent the, um, I sent the, the um, Thrustmaster um, TPR pedals back. Um, I'm not going to get a replacement until about the 4th or 5th of May, um, probably the 6th of May I guess. Um, so I'm back to my old Cytex. Now the trouble with my Cytex is they're a little bit, yeah. <laughs> we, I've, I've put some silicon oil on them to grease them a little bit, but they're still a little bit ropey. However, they do not turn off. So as they don't turn off, um, then um, that's good. And I'm wearing my Amelia t-shirt, my Amelia, actually my Amelia hoodie. Um, so uh, John E of the Two Tone Murphy Flying Circus did some fantastic designs for me to, to commemorate the uh, the flight. And um, if you fancy getting yourself a muggage or a t-shirtage or a, or a hoodie to, to celebrate the flight, then you can go and, uh, not that one, it's that one. You can actually go and get some over on my merchandise store. And it's got a commemorative edition. It's got the Earhart light. It's got the Mooney um, and it's got uh, the Amelia Earhart in, in the clouds as a design. <laughs> You've got to remember that the, um, the sim can sometimes... Is, so where we all are in the sim, the computations it's doing to say that I'm here, you're there and so on, it's all doing dead reckoning. So just like we do in real world flying, the, the sim is trying to do all of that and sometimes if it forgets you end up in front or behind. So my next adventure, so yeah I'm obviously already planning that one. Um, so in terms of Amelia's adventures I've got to wait a little while. Um, Wing 42 are working on the Vega 5B. So when that comes out, I, I hope that I might be able to be lucky enough to get a copy of the, um, the, the beta. Um, and then I will do all of Amelia Earhart's Vega 5B flights um, across Atlantic, the San Francisco to Honolulu, the transcontinental Grand Circle navigation flights, east, west, west, east, and then her record-breaking flights from California through Mexico. So uh, yeah, so that's in a while when we get the Vega 5B, it's not there for a while. So once this one's over, and because I'm not quite sure, I was, so I'm going to do Amy Johnson next. Amy Johnson was the first British lady female pilot or first female pilot to fly from, from England to Australia. And she did it in 19 days. Um, and she did it in um, a biplane. Now the biplane that she flew isn't in the sim. So I'm probably going to have to try and do it in the Waco. Um, and she flew some incredibly long legs. They're about 600 odd miles each leg, um, single flights. And the, 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 the biplane she flew in then was, um, again, modified and had extra fuel capacity. So her first flight was from Croydon Airfield, which doesn't, sadly doesn't exist anymore. It's at Sainsbury's car park. Um, her first leg was Croydon in South, uh, South London all the way to Vienna. That was her first leg. Thank you for following Hayway 99. That's really kind of you. Thank you. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are in the world. I hope you're having a great day. Um, you've caught us with about 45 minutes to go until we get down to um, Assab, where we'll be doing a straight in uh, runway 12 landing. 
I had I turned off horse. I, I was doing some stuff. Uh, I was. I wonder if I've turned all my um, aids off. Because I was. I had aids turned on when I was helping. Um, uh, hey, Black Demon. How you doing? So yeah, it should be quite good in the Waco. Eh? It's going to be a because there was no um, no autopilot. It's going to be a it's going to be a good one. And she felt she flew it solo. So um, Amy Johnson was um, the first woman in England to ever own an aviation mechanics license. So she's an incredible lady as well and so we'll, we'll tell her story when we get there yeah she does yeah. yeah it's just i've got to practice landings tail draggers and I, I'm, i've always been a tricycle girl because obviously i was just, um, you know i flew in cessnas so flying along in <laughs> flying in tail draggers i never i've got no real world experience so i'm one of these people that if i've got experience of something i can do it but i'm just I just i just find it really hard to transition from I've not flown you before so I can't fly you in the sim <laughs> do you know what I mean so it's like if you've got a tricycle I can fly you because I've flown one before bit of a brain block ah oh. hey that's brilliant Katie no that's that's cool history Oh, the scenery. It is pretty desolate though, right? So she wrote, Eritrea stretches along the coast at Red Sea for 670 miles. Uh, our cast took us half that length. Soon we left the mountains behind the border of the coastline and bade farewell to everything that was green. As approaching Asaf, the coast became terribly barren beyond all description. Um, it might be barren. But I think you could describe it. But there's still some greenery on those hills. So I guess once these go, then it might get really dull again on the ground. Because this is prob oh, probably the hilliest section that we have. There's a little bit ahead of us, but um, nothing too major. You know, no nothing over a thousand feet once we get over this part. So we're about halfway through now, 42 minutes to go. Should get us in time for everyone to take a break and then join Moon at the Murphy stream at 8 o'clock tonight. So Goblin's on autopilot whilst eating dinner and is ahead of us. Dougal McTavish and my wingman, Dangerous Brian. It does though, Blackie Demon, doesn't it? I mean, we came over deserts and Amelia's diaries had said, you know, we saw greenery and trees and the first fauna that we'd seen in the entire trip. Well, it was the, certainly the first trees that we'd seen since we left um, Senegal. Um, and it was just incredible. Um, it, it, it just matched her, her diary and notes exactly and it did put goosebumps all up my arms when I, I, when I realized that it was, the sim was actually still the same-ish as it was when she flew over the mountains and the trees, and it was like an oasis up there. It was, it was incredible. Um, you know, we had Draco, and Draco's like geography teacher, um, and he was, you know, just awe, awing over how all of the, you know, the dry riverbeds were all mapped in, 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 in the game fact that you can fly over them and see them and they're there where normally someone would have normally had to have you know done the artwork to get it in whereas you know this is all being generated on the fly it's incredible right 40 on the left 45 on the right let's change those tanks welcome back goblin i hope you had a good dinner It's been an amazing experience, this 
flying across all the continents and seeing all the difference. Those 10 odd hours, 10 hours, 28 minutes over the Atlantic though, where it was literally just clouds, rain, blue seas <laughs> for 10 hours was like, you know, literally the, the VFR map had nothing but blue wherever we looked. That was, uh, that was quite incredible. So hopefully my rudders won't um, mess me about today. So it's going to be a pretty straight, straight, straight in runway 12 landing today. So I took a load at the weekend. Only two actually came out right, which was really weird. Surrounded. I mean, yeah, I've got yeah, Papa Joe B on my, my six, Dougal and Brian on my wings, uh, Kazaki and Druid ahead. So I'm still, you know, still trying to fly her gently because uh, she's got some long ways to go. And Amelia never overstressed her. Uh, when I say never overstressed her, the, the only probable overstressing she did was on the flight to Howland. But we're doing, we're doing about, what are we doing today? You know, 145 to 150, so we're on, we're on track. Oh, Alaska is, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. For all its foibles and issues this sim brings us, it still just makes you gasp. We, when we flew over from um, Khartoum into Masawa, you, you, the mount, the hills come up and then there are trees on the hills and then as you get up to the top and crest it it drops off almost like a sheer cliff and it's just trees and greeneries going down into the valleys the only thing that would have made it better was if there was a waterfall at that point as you came over the top and there was a waterfall cresting over a solid drop that would have been that would have just that would have been the the icing on the cake of that view just staggering And then as it sort of went from green, you know, all the green down to the mountains and then from the bottom of the mountains into the desert sand again, it was just incredible. <laughs> no problem, <laughs> Kazaki. Um, she was very in tune. She worked very, very closely, of course, with um, Clarence Johnson, or Kelly, Ke Clarence, Kelly Johnson, um, who, worked for Lockheed whilst he was uh, uh, doing his university masters and um, he as you can see here this is him working on the Electra for Lockheed oh thank you for the Folly X TED TV thank you very much um, as you notice here he's got a picture of him working with it but the, the important thing to note is it's got a single tail he actually as part of his work on the the uh, wind tunnel he designed to, for the Electra um, he uh, established that the, the twin rudders were actually inherently more stable and that's why the Electra has um, twin uh, rudders and a cross tail rather than a single tail and stabilizers. And of course Kelly Johnson as we all know went on to become the head of uh, the Skunk Works division. An incredible, incredible man and he was on this project. Ha, ha, ha. 
<laughs> QXTTV. Thank you so much for your rage and hosting my channel. That's really kind of you. Thank you. Really kind. Thank you. I hope you're having a great day. So, um, so this is the, um, my understanding is it, it that it did because of Cla uh, the, the work, the research that Clarence Johnson did. Um, the twin tails being inherently more stabilized. This is Sunny Asab that we're coming into, so. Had an altitude of uh, 50 feet back then. And um, today it's uh, pretty similar. It's 46 feet, so they've narrowed and dug it down a little bit. I am enjoying them. I really am enjoying them. I think that she did an incredible thing. Um, yeah, I think she did. And it's such a shame that she, you know, she didn't make it. But you know, I won't spoil it now. But there was when there was a uh, there was something she wrote to her husband um, that um, he she he should only open when if she didn't return. And the words in there just say everything about her. Um, but the short and long is that if a woman should fail, it should only serve as a challenge for someone to take it up and complete it. So uh, I'd like to think that she'd be proud of everybody that followed her, uh, especially the people that you know, carried on breaking uh, records as women. She, she inspired a, a lot of a, a lot of a lot of girls you know she took on you know she she you know she was very non-traditional back in 1937 when, when it was hard to be non-traditional you know and um, especially more so when she thought that every woman could do a job that a man could um, very challenging times even today to think that women can do jobs that men can It's only recently that women in the armed services in the UK can go onto the front line after years and years of fighting for it. So uh, yeah. the fact that she lectured, she ran, she ran airlines, had clothing, a clothing company. She had a, a luggage company. She had, she had, she had many pies. that she was cultivating. Oh, Dougal, look at that flying there, mate. Eritrea back in 1937 was under the control of um, the Italians and um, finding people that spoke English took was a bit of a challenge when they landed The approaching Assad, the coast was to torridly barren beyond description. Uh, 
Thank you, Captain Arash, for buying a mug. Thank you. Thank you for buying one of my memorial mugs. Hopefully, it won't take too long to get to, them, to you. Um, it was the first foothold in Eritrea, and they purchased the land there for a coal station, and they put an Italian steamship company there. And then later, it was a port where they would route troop movements through. Um, one of the funny things is that um, when they left Masawa, they, uh, the people at Masawa radioed New York to say that she'd set off on her trip for Karachi. And it led to the first point of this trip where people thought she'd gone missing. Um, so while she was flying the next leg from Asab to Karachi, um, there was lots of panicking going on in New York um, because they thought she'd gone missing, but she, they didn't realise she'd actually gone to Asab and then took off from there. So I later learned in India that on our departure from Masawa, it was announced as the actual takeoff of Karachi. When we become long overdue, there was natural anxiety regarding us, and when all reality, we just sat in Asab with our feet up. <laughs> 40 and 43, three gallons still change tanks. We are 28.2859 minutes out. runway is at um, 46 feet. I don't really want to go out on my sim, just make sure. I don't think I've got air pla airport plates on, but I might have turned them on when I was uh, helping someone yesterday, when I was helping Katie. So I may have turned, I, I don't recall putting it on for Newcastle, but I might have done. Well, that's great. Great to hear, Dougal. Everything is possible. Everything is possible. Just may not be quite as possible as you'd like it to be, but pretty much it should be possible. I still think it's pretty. Like my daughter, yeah, fearless. As it should be. Oh, cool. Very strong will. That's hard work. My daughter's 31 this year. Ages. Ages since she was a bear. Beautiful flying doodle. I do find it scary, yeah. <laughs> I do. Over to, there are volcanoes down this way now. There's one nearby, I think. Yeah, there 
is this one just over here somewhere is the do I'm going to say this wrong doobie volcano D-U-B-B-I because obviously it's where all the plates are joining and meeting let's put that one over there Okay, Captain Arash, you take care. Thank you very much, and I'll catch you on Wednesday. You take care now. Big Tone, hey, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Well, I'm good today. I wasn't very well last week, but I feel much better today, thank you. How are you doing? Ah, Sparrow. I'll have a look at that later, uh, Goblin, as well. Yeah, I'm surrounded by the uh, fireflies as we head down to Assad. Dangerous Brian, Duke McTavish, Papa Joe B, the Zaki Flyer, and Goblin Zoop is out front. Thank you, Big Tone, yeah. I felt really rough. Thankfully no pain anymore, so that's two times fresh. good because we've got a long flight on Saturday. Port Port Panda will be providing refreshments throughout my flight. Geology is fantastic. Yeah, very obvious volcanoes. Again, it's a different type of colouring that we've not seen. Two wingmen indeed, yeah. Dangerous Brian and Dougal McNabbit. Yeah. Fabulous stuff. Certainly hope to revisit this when Africa gets some world update love. I think they were saying that of all the places that people fly in the sim, that around 4% fly in Africa. That the vast majority is done in North America and, uh, and Europe. 4%, this continent is vast. 
and uh, hope to do a lot more here. I've been really surprised that it's been so outstanding. Scorpio 49 you're welcome we're, at, we're not too far away now we've got the last 20 minutes to go so about 57 miles 41 on the right getting ready to change tanks we're approaching top of descent and we'll just amble down oh there's someone flying above me as well now Nice. Now there's Scorpio now. So isn't it cool? Yeah, I think so. I was thinking just the same there. That this is all yeah, lava flow tracks, right? Looks, looks very similar to the, the tracks that you find um, on the island of Rangitoto in New Zealand. Isn't it? And Elisa, hello darling, how are you doing? How are you feeling after your jabs? I, I got the call today to go and get my second vaccination. It's on Saturday morning. Oh, it's goblin above me. Isn't it just, yeah. I mean, I've got it all cranked up so I can get a good view. And obviously with the, the widescreen monitor, I hope that it shows off a good sort of, um, a good view of everything. So 18 minutes to go. Even today I thought there might be more towns out here because of the sea, but there's not, is there? I guess if the infrastructure's not here to support it, there wouldn't be. It pretty is as barren today as it was back in 1937. Saturday when we were flying over the desert, it, we felt it was very much like Mars. This doesn't feel like Mars. Amazing, like empty landscape, yeah. Absolutely Scorpio. 40 and 40, change tanks to left. I will map that before I next fly. Well, hopefully you'll you'll feel a bit better soon, Annalisa. The the, the side effects don't last too long. So, full, full whack, full speed firewalling around 174. Um, I'm not firewalling it. Um, it really depends on outside temperature and other parameters, altitude and so on. But um, 
we're try I'm trying to keep it within the, the, the realms of what the Electra did back in 1937, which was around 150 knots. So we're doing about 145 at the moment. Um, she nursed the engines all the way around the flight um, on all of her legs. So just trying to, to keep it similar. Uh, the flight's been really good um, so far. It, I mean, it's a very short one today, just a couple of hours. Um, when we're nearly at the, uh, the, the landing, um, just getting ready for Sun Saturday, where we will fly from Asab all the way around the coast, south, south east coast of uh, Arabia, all the way over to Karachi in India. So this was, um, it will be on Saturday, the, uh, record, uh, the, the, the reconstruction, if you like, of the last historic record-breaking flight she actually took part in because it was the first time a woman had, or anyone had flown directly from the Red Sea to Karachi. So that's going to be something to, 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 to retrace her steps, even if it's in a sim. Um, I, I, it's going to be something special. It's about 10 and a half, 11 hours en route time Saturday. So it's going to be a good one. It's going to be a good one. So uh, it's been good. And the scenery is fantastic. It just is different, and she'd written that it was um, terribly, terribly uh, barren, and it, it pretty much is. But the colours, because of all the volcanic activity, it's just different again from what we've had. We had sort of like light yellows, earthies, then, it, then we had ochres and oranges at the weekend. Um, and I've obviously got the fireflies with me. Dangerous Brian, Scorpio, Doom McTavish, Kazaki Fire, Goblin Zeus, uh, Papa Joe B. About 13 minutes out now, so I'm going to start, um, start making our way down. And I wish my Bravo would work on this properly, but it doesn't. Let's get down about. Yeah, let's get down about three thousand feet. We we can. We'll slowly go down. I don't need to go down, speeding it along at the moment. That'll be a nice, nice descent there. We're going to be straight in runway twelve. For those that are interested, should literally be off our nose when we come up to it. Yes, it was this type of um, the dry riverbeds that Draco was talking about on Saturday. Isn't it incredible that it's all here as it is in real life? Um, the Alpha Yoke is absolutely fantastic. Um, I used to have the Cytec, and I still do, it's under my desk. Um, it, 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 it's, it's chalk and cheese. It's definitely worth the, the extra money for it. Um, I've also got the Bravo Throttle now, um, which I got last week. Finally turned off after a long time waiting. And that is incredible too. So uh, again, it's worth the money. Um, very well constructed. The yoke is, uh, you know, the fact that I've got 180 degrees deflection left and right rather than 45 degrees. So, you know, every one degree is one degree rather than every one degree being two degrees. So, um, and there's no centre detente as well, which is um, rather nice. So, you know, and when you're, when you're watching the, the yoke, so, you know, I can just make a little movement. If I do it, it will wobble. It doesn't stick in the middle. So it's nice. Make sure I haven't turned myself off auto for the moment, but no, I'm good. So yeah, if you get an opportunity to grab hold of one, I think they I think that I think they're great. I'm not sponsored by a honeycomb in any shape, way, manner, or form. Um, so, but I love it. It's really good. I was very lucky to get hold of one when I did um, last September. Good girl, I'm managing my 
mixture. So, well, I'm, I'm not messing with buttons, Murphy, but when I've landed and before I fly with you tonight, I'll, I'll check that one. Uh, I'll check. I'm sure because it works in the Cessna absolutely beautifully and it works in the Piper absolutely beautifully. So there are just some foibles with the, some of the aircraft and getting things working. So I'm sure it will work because I've got it working on the horn, so it should work. Because look, I've actually got an original SciTech Cessna trim wheel, which I could never get working in the sim uh, on its own without using Spad Next. Um, but having a proper trim wheel, oh, it just makes it that much nicer. It, 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 I just it, the, the the muscle memory comes back. You know, and I'm, I'm working the trim wheel rather than trying to press buttons on a horn, which I'm not, I wasn't used to. But no, I don't really want to press buttons while I'm coming down to Lambeth. <laughs> so if you are behind me, just, just, I'm just going to quickly press my lights just a little bit to stop me going into the yellows. Yeah, we have a yeah, good few flying. And all getting in some prep for the Murphy stream tonight, where we'll be uh, flying the the last leg of the uh, Orient Express with the. Oh, you've got one and it's still in the box. Or oh, is it not itching to get out <laughs> and be used? It's lovely. It's a great yoke. Six minutes out, 20 miles till airport. Yeah. I just, I, do you know, I haven't actually tried it since I got the honeycomb, to be fair. Um, but perhaps, um, perhaps it was working still. It works next plane absolutely perfectly. A little dip on the air brakes again, just to make sure I'm not going to go too naughty. It's a Dougal. So they are the volcanoes. Um, oh, I had the sight tech for years. But you will feel the difference. Doobie, Nabro, the huge one, and Mala, Mala Halel. Because ah. there is a volcano just outside, or was outside the, outside the um, hangar. So there's the. So we'll, when we get down, we'll, we'll have to see because there was a, a volcano outside the old um, airport. She cheering me on. Little Lana cat. Yeah.
so there's the road and that road pretty much goes all the way to the airport so we can follow that and um, divvy on down so that's runway in sight I think up there yep there's runway in sight so nearly there. So 46, 46 feet is the airport elevation. It was uh, 55 feet in 1937, so it's a little bit lower than it used to be. And the volcano is still there, but that's the volcano that you could, they could see out of the hangar. I'll slow myself down now, guys. True. So about nine miles out. Isn't it just, hey? I'm so pleased <laughs> to be able to find the pictures and then sort of go, ha ah, look. Changing tanks now to my fullest tank for descent. Getting ready to get into so gear range shortly, about two miles. I've got two miles to go, yeah. Let's trim it down a bit now. Seatbelts and harnesses are secure. Mixture is full forward propeller and RPM as needed. Uh, Fred's looking nervous in the back, so he's had his passenger briefing. Uh, fullest tank is engaged. Uh, runway at the site. So let's just bring her up a little bit and just bleed into the flap zone. Let's get some flaps up. Dougal McTavish. Oh, Annalisa, thank you so much for gifting a sub to Dougal. That's really kind of you, darling. Thank you. So as you all know me by now, I like to take things nice and slow when I'm coming in, get myself nice and stabilized. I don't like to, I don't like to zoom in and... Three miles, second stage. Isn't it looking cool? Oh, 
I hope so, Dal. My, my rudders are a bit dodgy, but let's see what we do. And welcome, thank you so much. Thank you for the follow. My little rudders are a little bit, they're not as nice as the TPRs I had to send back. and park over by that hangar so that we can uh, after everyone's landed because that's the volcano nice long runway anyway so and as the old instructor said try and catch the moving bus as it as you level it out Nose up, nose the end of the runway, bleed off to speed. Nose up, nose up, come on, stall it down. Come on, you want to put your reels down, come on. Thank you very much. And there we go, we're down in a sub. Start to tidy it up as we go up. Oh, 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 there's my rudders again, but I'm just a little bit oversensitive. Okay, that's good. I shall just exit the runway and then we'll see people come in. Buttered the bread. I mean, I don't like to come in crazy fast anyway, so it's not my thing. Let's uh, turn around and see people come in and quickly hop out. Uh, Kazaki sound already as Doom comes in. Scorpio's there. The next leg is at Saturday um, afternoon, UK time, two o'clock, and it's um, going to be about 10 and a half to 11 hours. We're flying from here in a Saab all the way around the southeast coast of Arabia, all the way to Karachi in India. It's going to take, uh, I, I, my, my flight plan estimates 10 hours, 28 minutes ETE, but I reckon it'll probably be around 11 hours. Um, so Saturday, the 1st of May at 2 p.m. British summer time. Ab JB, welcome to Asab. Goblin Zeus, welcome to Asab. Thanks, Vlogstrop. We'll see you then. And Druid Zeus. Is Brian down? Did I miss Brian? Are you down, Brian? You're very welcome. Did I miss Brian? T tell me I miss Brian. Oh, Brian? Are you there? Can I not see Brian? So, there's the volcano, look. So, let's have a look. It pretty much is, it is, is. Look at it. I don't see Brian either. I'm just going to move over to the, the hangar and then keep a lookout for Brian. Oh no, Brian had a CTD. You're very welcome, Blackie Dimon, and I hope to see you again soon. And, um, you know, I was just going to show something. So, obviously, we've got um, this is the Electra being re um, refuelled in a Saab. Um, they worked on the engines. Um, a CTD has crashed a desktop. Um, it basically means the, the, the sim crashed. Um, it's Amelia and Fred with one of the, the uh, oil barrels that they had. And uh, a load of people came out to see them. Yeah, the sim can be a bit of a pain make sure we're all nicely tidied up so flaps are all up uh, lights can come off except beacon um, that's all off parking brake is on avionics can come off and then we can get that engine stopped 
So while I'm doing that, do that and that, and then do a continue. So we can see if I'm... Hey, Muse fan. Lovely to see you. Just caught us as we landed. Um, we've we've made it to a sub. Um, just one hour, 28 minutes, ET in the air. So um, we're at a sub and I'm just parked looking out over the volcano that... Um, they could all see from the hangar back in 1937. So I think that's pretty incredible that, uh, you know, I mean, uh, uh, volcanoes don't go anywhere, do they? But they could have moved the airport and they haven't. So that's, uh, that's brilliant. Um, so I don't know if Brian's still going to be coming into land. Um, did he say he was going to? Oh. Are you are you carrying on, Brian? Or are you just giving, give, stopping there and carrying on late? Then, because if you if you're all done, then then I'll say goodbye to everybody and we'll all. Isn't it incredible? Look. So the airport's in a slightly different location. It's probably you know these buildings over here. Thinking it is those buildings. Do you know what? It's those ones over there, isn't it? Or, mm, I don't know. But they look like the buildings that were there in those days. Anyway, it's, it's hard to say. It's kind of strange, but also kind of lovely. Well, there we go. Thank you ever so much, everybody. Thank you um, for joining me this evening on this little impromptu stream on our 17th leg of the Amelia Earhart Round the World flight. We've flown from Asab uh, to Asab from Asawa. Saturday, 2 p.m. Join us again as we head off on our long flight um, across the um, across Arabia to um, India and leaving the African continent behind. So thanks ever so much, everyone. Appreciate all of the follows, all of the subscriptions um, and, and all of you turning up again to support me. I love you all and thank you so much. See you on Murph stream in just over half an hour. Until then, see you later. Sorry, um, down with English Sanchez, two tone yeah, Murphy, is um, as as the, is the person that we um, we fly with on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and you can catch him over on Twitch at 8 p.m. UK yeah, uh, BST dude, tonight. So crazy! I gotta be honest, Viper. I'm, I'm nervous. Just gonna throw in a quick um, a quick raid to it, it, Coffee it, House. So Lord, see you all soon. Not only for my stream, but also for my main business, which is video production, to have amazing computers. And if I don't have amazing computers, I can't work. So the good thing is, is I, I do work uh, mostly in Apple Final Cut Pro. So um, Macs are a little easier to get because Apple is basically as rich as a country, if not richer than some countries. So getting Mac, um, getting a nice Mac is not nearly as hard that can run the software that I need to make money with. So I'm not as worried when it comes to that sort of thing. But yeah, I gotta be honest, dude. Like, it's a scary market when you're when you're trying to do technology for a living. I mean, I have a soundboard. I've got multiple PCs for running my stream. I've got my Mac for running all my video editing. Like, my DSLR cameras. Like, I, I mean, I have certain things that I have have to be able to run my business and if I don't have those certain things I'm in big big trouble and can't complete jobs that we rely on to pay our, our monthly bills and our mortgage and things like that so yeah it's scary yo -ho, Allison Johnson is raining with a party of 27 Allison thank you so much I love you you're amazing I hope you're doing super well on a Monday welcome to the Allison Johnson Raiders you guys rock welcome to the coffee house 
Cheers, everybody. There's a sip for all of the Allison Johnson Raiders. What's cracking, everybody? I am flying across the United States of America with my friend One Horn today. Anyone who wants to jump in can feel free. Um, if you're just uh, new to here and you've never been over here to the coffee house before, uh, we are flying this little go-kart with wings, the Aero Flight 103, all the way across the United States of America. We started in Pilgrim's Monument, Massachusetts on the Atlantic Ocean. And we um, are all the way uh, just about to Tucson, Arizona. We're, land we're landed in San Diego. And then we're going to plan the next trip, which we were all just talking about right before you guys arrived. And uh, it's looking like those are going to be uh, a trip up the West Coast, and we may switch over to the Power Solo. Um, a quick little bio. I've flown ultralights in real life as well as real airplanes. Uh, I've been general aviation for half of my life, and I've been a radio-controlled helicopter and airplane pilot since I was in the sixth grade. So aviation has been a huge part of what I love and am a part of. So, uh, yeah, I, I've uh, done a lot of different types of aviation. In fact, uh, one of my claims to fame was a, uh, I did a bunch of movie work in the drone industry. Um, I own a video production company, and so combining cameras with uh, radio-controlled flying drones and helicopters was kind of right up my alley. So that was a super fun thing as well. But yeah, a little bit about what we're doing here, and I am so happy that all of you guys are here with us. Let's go and see... Let's, uh, what the chats... Oh, we got Big Tone 66 with the follow. Thank you so much. Only seven countries have annual GDP figures greater than Apple's market cap. Right, isn't that incredible? Hey, Colonel Fork, subscribe with Prime. Thank you so much for two months. Currently on a two-month streak. Nice. We've only had subs two months, Colonel Fork, so that's like, you're, you're 100%. Your batting average is like perfect right now. And in case you guys wonder why I'm doing this, my monitors are like way across my 12 foot desk. And so my chat, I'm working on kind of moving all this stuff and I'm making a wrap around here. So I gotta like look really far away to see all my chats at the moment. Hey, Gibbo Ariel, nice to meet you. Hello, hello. Hey mate, I hope you're doing well. Allison, I'm doing awesome. I had a great weekend. The sun is shining and I'm having an amazing flight today already. Um, we had a little bit of technical difficulty this morning when we got started because ForeFlight decided to completely erase itself from my iPad since our last stream. Like, all we did was shut down last stream on Friday, and I come back and ForeFlight decided to take a hiatus. So, kind of crazy. Big Tone redeemed a sound alert. Oh, the sound alerts are so much fun. I love those. Mechanical, hey, how's it going, dude? Nice to see ya. I got done with finals last week, and what do I decide to do now? Relax, nah, clean the whole house. <laughs> yeah, what is wrong with you, Flexen? I don't know about that. Exactly, DC Viper. See, that's what I would have done. I got a bad feeling about this, too. It's getting scary. We're in the mountains in a go-kart. Pedal faster, guys. <laughs> All right, we are on course. We're about two-thirds of the way through this leg. Yo, Muse fan, one, two, three, four, five. Thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the coffee house. We got the uh, Aero Light Army back here with us. We got Fat Rat. Hey, there's Fat Rat. What's up, dude? He joined in the Tiger Stripes. I feel like playing Eye of the Tiger right now. Let's go. I just hopped in and heard hiatus. Oh, I said, hey, what's up, Speed Nut? Um, this morning, like, we shut off our stream on Friday.
my all-time favorite ultralight. Yeah, I, I got a special place in my heart for that one, too, because that's what I learned to fly. Although, I got to tell you, this aerolite, I'm really starting to enjoy this thing. And um, I, I have told most of you guys, I, I talked with the guy who manufactures and owns the aerolite company now. And uh, about two weeks ago, when uh, I started the search for looking to buy one, and there's a strong possibility I may be buying one of these. Um, so, yeah. and almost out of the Class C airspace where we're not supposed to be. Hey, RC Max 06, I see you up there. Sporties has a... 